I'm here with Inga Kron from Kowi. And you were the project manager and or principal di designer for the Chernakele Bridge in Turkey, is that right? Uh, yes, indeed, yes. Can you tell me, I mean, what, what, it must have been an amazing project to work on, you know, now the longest span in the world. What, what particular aspects were so challenging for you and, and most enjoyable for you? I think uh, the work together with both my team and, and with the contractor has been tremendously nice. I mean, to be able to, uh, to, to do this work and uh, feel the synergy, uh, work together with the Turkish and the Korean contractor and, and at the same time our own team, that, that has been, I think, the most fantastic to see that this is completed and see it built as well. I think seeing it built is a nice thing. Of course, that must be so, so rewarding to see yeah. it built. And it's the longest span in the world by a significant margin, isn't it? I mean, what were the things that that, that what, what were the challenges that that particularly brought about that you had to deal with? I mean, the, the span was given on beforehand because that is uh, 2023, which is the year, 100 year anniversary of the Turkish Republic. So, so we had to, and that also that fits with the water depths at, at the site. So, so, but still, not to have it longer, we had to f uh, make foundations about 40 meters of water depths uh, at quite a challenging soil conditions. And so, so, we, so we did a lot to optimize the, 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 the structure to, to, to carry the load and be sure. compliant. So the, the, the site is obviously an earthquake zone the, in Turkey. There's, we know there's a lot of earthquakes there. And in fact, uh, just recently, there was a very, very large earthquake in, in Turkey, which you know, killed a lot of people in Turkey and Syria. But what, what did you have to do with the bridge design to deal with that kind of, of issue? Yeah, we, we have done a lot about earthquake design, obviously. It's not the highest level earthquake zone in Turkey since it's the southwestern corner. It's not that bad, but it's still high earthquakes. So we have, for example, we have made the tower foundations. Underneath the tower foundation, there's a, they are founded on a caisson, and then there is a fuse so that we have a inclusion piles in the soil beneath to strengthen the soil. This was needed because uh, the soil was not that good and, and then the, the, there's a gravel bed so that they are not actually connected so they can they can move independently in case of a huge earthquake but it actually showed that the largest force for, for the towers was actually the, the, the ship impact loads okay. so so it, it's so highly a traffic a ship traffic area yeah. with, with so, so, such a lot of traffic that these are actually posing a larger okay. risk to the foundations okay. but about equal okay. yeah. Yes, so shipping impact, obviously yeah. a big issue. Yeah. And Inga, I, I know you, and I know that, that you've worked on some really exciting projects. Yeah. Um, a lot of them, big bridges. Um, how about telling us what have you found most enjoyable about being a, a, a bridge engineer? I mean, the ultimate thing is, of course, coming to sites, seeing it built. I mean, it's a tremendous pleasure to be able to to crawl the tower and put your head out in 334 meters yeah. of height and, and look at the project that, yeah. that, that we together with the contract and a lot of designers ha have completed. This yeah. is yeah. a huge uh, feeling of pleasure. And then of course, yeah. you know, it, it is nice being the designer of the world's longest suspension bridge. I must say it, it makes you a little proud. Makes you <laughs> stand a bit tall. Yeah. Stand a bit taller. Yeah. And you've been a long time member of IABSI as well, haven't you? Yeah, um, you know, how, how has IABSI helped you? And how, what might you say to somebody who's thinking about joining IABSI? Not quite sure. What, what value does it added to you? I think there's a lot of work also in the, the national committees where there's a lot of interesting uh, side visits or meetings or presentations and there's a lot of focus also on the scientific part. So I think it joins together scientific people and, and people from practice with kind of a mixed uh, with the journal and everything. I think it has a, has a, has, has a good, good focus. And then, of course, it's about bridges yeah. primarily and yeah. or bridge engineers. That's kind of nice. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> And one more, one more question. Um, we love to encourage young engineers, um, and, uh, and and maybe you know young women engineers particularly because we don't have enough of them. We want more of those. What what would you say to to a young woman who's thinking about becoming a, an engineer? How, how would what would you say, and how do they get encouraged into this wonderful profession? Yeah, I think that the young engineers all should, uh, of course, join uh, the bridge engineering, but but also to become an engineer. I think it's it's really important that you feel you are creative. 
And, and, and I think we have to change the perception because at least in Denmark there's a perception and engineers are boring and you know and if people give a compliment to me you say oh you don't look like an engineer and I'm, I'm sure they mean it well but it's kind of a little offending yeah, why don't yeah. I look like an engineer yeah. and, and you know I, I think we, we should bring uh, all kinds of uh, people into engineering and I think you have a creative force and it, it's not like bookkeeping it's not like the backside of things, you, you can actually go out and do something fantastic yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. together with a lot of other people. Engineering is far from boring and you're a fantastic advocate just to show exactly what I mean. Thank you Inga so much. Thank you very much.